Okay, traders, that's 1 p.m. UK time. Welcome to today's live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. If you can hear me and you can see the Ticknell welcome screen, if you could just type a Y in the chat box so I know that uh, we're ready to roll here. Good stuff. Okay, as always, before we get going, uh, important to adhere to the um, risk disclaimer, uh, specifically for today's uh, discussion. It's, uh, it's important to understand that the opinions expressed by me are solely mine and they're not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. A uh, brief introduction to myself. Uh, like I said, my name is Patrick Munley. After I graduated from university, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. After a couple of years learning the ropes, I left with some colleagues and went on to co-found and successfully exit a consulting startup post a merger in late 2004. I then moved on to explore my passion for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading or more appropriately day gambling the S&P 500. And after some early beginners luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginners luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down, uh, giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six figure financial hit. Uh, to say this was a gut wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Uh, working with my mentor for a period of about 18 months to two years, it was a time during which I upped not just my technical game, researching and developing a strategy that importantly suited my personality. I extensively back and forward tested this strategy and developed a rigorous risk management approach to underpin it all. But most importantly, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably the most important watershed shift I made was moving from being a highly goal oriented individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have that professional trading mindset and you understand that the true nature of trading is simply that of a numbers game in which you're playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've Personally mentored over 100 private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. I've consulted to numerous brokers and trading education brands, contributing uh, written content, webinars, and live presentations on a range of topics, from market analysis to trading, to development and execution. In addition to my fund management and private mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert for Tickmill, where I provide a daily market outlook every morning. You can access that through their blog and you can get it delivered to your inbox uh, if you register your email address on there. I also provide um, through their social media platforms and YouTube uh, intraday analysis of opportunities I'm watching in the market. And uh, you can find those through their, uh, their social media channels. Um, my other, I guess, passion project is as head of trading and trader education for a leading trading education brand called fxcareerswap.com. Uh, we offer development and funding to retail trading talent. At FX Career Swap, we don't just develop retail traders' market and trading strategy knowledge. We work on mindset development through a structured program that culminates in 
managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. For those that are interested, uh, you can see on the screen there, there's uh, the number of the, the trade desk in London. Uh, you can give the guys a call or drop them an email and they will come back to you in a timely fashion with information with respect to what it is we are doing at FX Cariswap. So that's, uh, that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. Let's, uh, let's jump into the charts here. We can start with the S&P 500. And um, I, 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 before I jump into the S&P 500 here, I just want to uh, highlight to you all that we are actually launching a new program um, through Tickmill, uh, specifically focused on intraday trading uh, the e-mini S&P 500. We're, we're going to be hosting a webinar um, next week, uh, Wednesday at 1 p.m., where I'll be walking through uh, the strategy that uh, I've used uh, over the past 15 years to uh, to successfully navigate the um, the S&P, the e-mini S&P. Sorry, um, specifically with using some uh, some interesting. Uh, unique features to the uh, the futures market with respect to market internals and uh, and I'll be walking you through uh, what we're going to be doing there we're going to be setting up a, a strategy group a close strategy group whereby on a daily basis I'll be delivering a trade plan for this session ahead the cash session so uh, that opens at 2 30 UK time and I'll be giving specific areas or action areas where there will be trading opportunities and I'll be giving my view on where we are in the market, where, what, we're, what the market's looking to achieve and, uh, and how best we can align ourselves uh, to, uh, to profit, to consistently profit from, um, from trading these, uh, these intraday timeframes. So that's going, to, uh, that's going to kick off next Wednesday at 1 p.m. So I believe there'll be a, a, an email or some promotion with respect to that. So you'll be able to register if you're interested in joining us uh, for those sessions. Okay, so back to the, uh, the daily charts. S&P 500, I'm looking for the S&P 500 now to, uh, to grind higher here and ultimately get a test of this 41.23, uh, which is the equality objective versus this A, B, C, D structure. And we have weekly range resistance at 41.54. We have this ascending trend line coming in just below there, 41.42. So there's a uh, there's about a, there's a 30 point zone there that I'm going to be paying attention to, watching for daily reversal patterns um, to uh, to establish short positions here. And I think we can certainly get a move back down to retest uh, the four, let's say the 4,000 level uh, from above initially. And ultimately, I think we could probably grind it out and get a move to uh, to get a test of the monthly pivot from above at 39.05. Oh, um, from there, then uh, what I'd be looking for would be bullish reversal patterns to, um, to re-engage long positions, ultimately looking for another leg higher here, up into monthly range resistance at, uh, at 42.44. And then we have the yearly R1 coming in at 42.87. So uh, this is going to be a key area, I believe, here, this, this zone, this 41.23 to uh, 41.53. Watch for, uh, for bearish reversal patterns there to do something on the short side. We've got uh, some nice momentum divergence developing as well. Let's move on to take a look at the equal weighted dollar index. So uh, this is the dollar index versus the Aussie, yen, sterling and euro on an equal, <coughs> an equal weighted basis. Uh, we got bullish reversal yesterday from the monthly pivot. And that, well, I was looking for some follow through this morning doesn't look at this stage like we're getting it, but if we can uh, get a break of yesterday's highs, I think it sets up a test of that 120 quality objective, yearly pivot just above at 129, uh, 120.96, sorry, and monthly range resistance, 120.77. Certainly I'd be paying attention to how we trade there. I think bearish reversal patterns in that zone offer an opportunity on the short side. Now let's take a look at the broader equal, uh, a broader dollar index. And again, we've got that bullish reversal coming from the uh, weekly range support at uh, 92.14, but we're not getting any follow through at the moment. If we can get follow through, I think that's an opportunity to set a base then uh, for this test of the yearly pivots at uh, 94.16. And we've got an equality 
objective at 94.08. From there, again, watching for bearish reversal patterns to do something on the short side. But if we lose weekly range support, then I think we're headed back down to take another look at, uh, at this 91.28 um, support zone. And then we could be setting up uh, head and shoulders to see us actually trading back down into this uh, 90.27 support. So. Today, uh, the close today and tomorrow are going to be pivotal to see which uh, which way we're going to which way this is going to play out um, with respect to the dollar index. But whilst we're holding weekly range support, we could see uh, we could see a break to the upside. But like I say, we lose it, and uh, and I think we're back down into ninety one twenty eight in pretty uh, pretty short order. The U.S. ten year yield has come off, um, testing support now. This is going to be again this pivotal to, uh, to where we see this dollar trade. If we can get back through uh, yesterday's highs at the 1.67% range, uh, I think that sets up then for the next leg to the upside um, with the yields. Really can't, uh, can't get concerned really about the, the yield story here unless we take out this interim trend channel support at 1.58%. Uh, at Let's take a look at the gold. Gold moved uh, moved up nicely through that from that double bottom, stalling out a bit here. Now we might have uh, might have some range resistance coming in here. Any pullbacks that ultimately hold uh, support at the 17 17.15 area, uh, I think set up a nice opportunity on the long side to uh, to get a move up into the yearly pivot from below around eighteen hundred dollar level. Silver. Coming into symmetry swing resistance. When I talk about symmetry swing resistance, I'm talking about the last swing here that we had before we rolled over. So, silver, uh, look for it. Looking for silver to stall out here at 25.60, and uh, and then take that next leg lower into the range support at the $22 level. And that is going to be an area where I'll be paying close attention to how we trade because I think there could be an opportunity to to play that support zone to also move back up to test range resistance in that $30 area. Crude oil uh, going nowhere fast at the moment, holding the 62.29. We are looking for, I'm looking for a 51 test here, the equality objective. And then I'd certainly be interested uh, in crude on the long side, uh, looking for a move up into the top side of the channel, 74.50 now in, uh, in crude. So we'll, uh, we'll have to see if, uh, if we get this lurch lower to test the support zone, but that, that's the key area for me in terms of crude oil. Dr. Copper, not, uh, not going anywhere either at this stage. Um, whilst we hold uh, 418 as resistance, we're looking for 367, and that will be the area to re-engage on the long side for copper. Bullish consolidation really at this point is, uh, is what we're doing as, uh, as we digest this big move that we've seen to the upside in terms of copper. And if this stimulus plan, I think I mentioned this last week, if this stimulus plan gets uh, gets backing in the US, then they're gonna be needing uh, needing a whole bunch of copper to implement their uh, their infrastructure program. So bullish copper really is the, uh, is the name of the game. Bitcoin coming into some support here, monthly pivot from above 55,000, uh, internal ascending trend line, third touch, 54, 54, yeah, 54,000. So watching for bullish reversal patterns here and, uh, and I might as well look to add to my cash position if we get a setup. So I think we can then be looking for a 66, let's say 67,000 test um, on the upside, but still cognizant of this momentum divergence, which I think, you know, should be addressed at some point. And when it does, the area I think we'll trade back to is this, uh, this ascending trend line for a third touch, we'll just have to see when uh, when that plays out. But that would certainly be an area where I'd be looking to to add to long positions in Bitcoin. The dollar yuan has hold, held uh, is looking to hold this trend line here, and if we can hold this trend line, get a bullish reversal pattern today through the pivot there at six fifty six. Then uh, the next stop is going to be six sixty four on the upside. If we lose weekly range support at six point, uh, 652, then we look for a retest uh, of 647 on the downside. 
dollar yen has pulled back into the, uh, the initial support zone that I've been watching here. So we'll have to see if we can hold here and get a bullish reversal into, uh, into next, uh, sorry, into tomorrow's, the Friday close, then I think that could actually set up the, uh, the next area, uh, the, the next opportunity on the long side in terms of uh, the dollar yuan here. And ultimately I'm looking for that 113 before we, uh, we see a more meaningful correction. Swissy um, had short positions running in this, took profits uh, earlier in the week here. Now looking to see if we can hold uh, this weekly S3 here, um, then I think we can see a, another leg to the upside here to ultimately target this wave five objective at 95. And we'd have uh, this trend line coming in just above the uh, 95.25 yearly R1 uh, coming in at 95.70. So this will be a pivotal zone here. And I think this is, if we hold this support area, then this is, I think, where we're going to stall out and see a more meaningful correction in the Swissy. But if we lose this S3, then we're in quick, uh, quick order. I think we're back down to 92.11. And then we'd have to start thinking about a head and shoulders scenario developing and, uh, and a much deeper corrective move uh, playing out in the Swissy. So pivotal to see how we how we trade at this S3. Can we hold it? Can we get back above the monthly uh, pivot and the uh, VWAP cluster here to, to set that leg for that, uh, that 95? Looney, uh, not going anywhere fast at this stage, uh, looks to be in another corrective phase. I'd certainly be paying attention to any move into this uh, 127.20 area, watch for bearish reversal patterns there. And I think that sets up a move to get down into this 120. Um, really, it really the, the only way to, the, or for me anyway, in terms of thinking about getting constructive on the Looney, what we'd have to see would be some type of inverse head and shoulder scenario. So get up into this, monthly range resistance, and then hold uh, hold this 126 area support to suggest a bigger advance. But whilst we, uh, whilst we can't, until, we, until that type of pattern starts to play out, I, uh, I remain bearish the loony. Euro, um, so we see, we've seen a nice uh, correction higher from uh, from that yearly pivot. So it was good. I was long that the euro earlier this week, had a couple of positions, took profits on those. We've got a bearish reversal pattern yesterday, pin bar there from the weekly R3. And um, it, closed, it closed bearish in terms of uh, the normal candlesticks, but I use, uh, this, I use the five period VWAP to give me the indication of the near term trend. And uh, that still remains bullish at the moment. So I, well, if, if we got to close back below that VWAP, so around this 1840 level today, uh, with the RSI stochastic up into the overbought zone, uh, that could set up this, uh, this next leg lower here to actually target this, um, this 116 as support. If we don't get that uh, rejection, then I think we're probably into this type of, uh, if, if we're probably gonna see a correction continue to move higher and ultimately uh, get back up into this 119.80 area. You can see uh, what I'd be looking for would be this type of scenario to, um, to play out, to ultimately trade into that 120 uh, before then maybe we head lower again in uh, what we could see then would be a, a much bigger head and shoulders scenario. But uh, watching, yeah, paying attention to the close here on the euro, if we get a close back through uh, that 118.13, that would uh, that'd be a bearish development, I think, and we could be looking for an early test of the 116, which obviously coincides with the dollar index heading back up to that 94 target that I talked about at the beginning. Uh, what I'm paying close attention to on the close tonight is this euro yen, uh, potential double top here, bags of divergence, so if we get a weak close here in the euro yen, I'm going to be looking at short positions tomorrow um, for the euro yen. I think we get it. We can certainly look back down to 128.30 as the first port of call for um, for a euro yen uh, decline here. If we and then if we take out the trend line support, then it's uh, 127.40s again. So uh, we'll see how that plays out. But we're looking for a weak close, double top with all the divergence. That uh, that's a, that's qualifies as a uh, a signal for my strategies. 
Euro sterling, this, uh, this traded higher. I was long this this morning and, uh, and I scratched the trade. We have basically come into symmetry swing resistance here to the tick, you can see. And, um, and I, I was looking for some pre buying pressure to, to kick in this morning and take us through there, didn't happen. And so I'm out of that position now and I'll watch for maybe a deeper corrective move to uh, develop before, uh, before taking another look potentially on the long side in terms of the Euro Sterling. Euro CAD came just shy of the target zone uh, that I was tracking there and we're seeing some tails here, some definite supply coming into the market. So it could be now that we have a wave four high in place here. And if that's the case, the, uh, the downside here for the Euro CAD uh, should equal wave one. Whoops, a daisy. So if we have our wave four in place, then the downside objective now becomes 145 for the Euro CAD. So uh, it's got a bit of work to do to get back through the, um, the VWAPs here, but the close below 149.13 would be bearish for the Euro CAD. And I'd certainly be thinking about uh, looking at short positions there to target that, uh, that 145 area. Sterling Aussie uh, set up. Well, we came again just shy of the equality objective, and we're seeing uh, some weakness develop here. We'd, uh, we'd certain, I'd certainly want to see this trend line taken out, monthly range support, weekly range support gone before getting in, uh, before looking at short positions in um, in the Sterling Aussie. But if uh, if we can get through those areas, then there's, uh, there's plenty of scope on the downside of Sterling Aussie. Sterling, uh, again, I was in this position this morning short, and it's uh, it ran. We had a little bit of profit running in that, and I think the stocks break even, and uh, we've since seen a bit of a bounce. If we look on the intraday chart here, going to the hourly, <coughs> you can see this was the setup I was tracking. I was looking for this extension lower from the pivot, which we started to get, but uh, it was ultimately to be or proved to be a, a bear trap because we immediately held. Uh, the lows there, and then we've got that bullish inside reversal. So now we're back up. So what's the story? So what, what I'd be looking for here is um, maybe a three-wave scenario like this uh, to develop. And then I'd certainly look again on the, um, on the short side in terms of uh, sterling. I'm looking for a, a test of 135.50 uh, on the downside before uh, really getting bullish again. On, uh, on sterling. So that's versus um, this swing here. So whilst we hold this area's resistance, this gives me the, the downside objective in terms of an equality move. So we'll have to, uh, I'm going to keep, be keeping an eye on sterling on the short side. Sterling yen, great setup here in sterling yen. Uh, I actually didn't, uh, I actually missed it. Uh, being away from the desk, but uh, triple divergence. We've got great divergence set up, big outside reversal, consolidated, and then broke lower. So whilst, uh, whilst we continue to see pressure on the downside now, we want to think about um, in terms of targets here. And uh, the initial way of the, that I look to measure for these targets is uh, symmetry swings. So we can initially look now for potential support to develop 149.57, and then what I'd watch for is if we can get in here, get that test, maybe a bit of a pullback there into a potential head and shoulders to complete then a, a three-way corrective move to the downside. So uh, watch that 149.57 and uh, potential head and shoulders set up to do something on the short side of Sterling Yen. Sterling Kiwi, nothing for me to do there. The Aussie, I've got a, an order to, uh, to go short the Aussie at 76. I think if we can get, if, if we roll over today after yesterday's bearish, uh, bearish reversal pattern, the weekly trend is to the downside, the monthly trend is now flipped to the downside, then I think that sets up this move to get us into this 7460. If we don't get it, if we, buyers aren't at home there, then we can start to think about a target down here towards the, uh, the 74 level for potentially completing the corrections. So this, is, this setup works for me um, on the, in terms of risk reward, and, uh, and we'll just see if we can get that follow through uh, to the downside through 76 and uh, take a look at 74, 66 and potentially 74 as the downside objective. Aussie yen, 
watching this for a potential short opportunity as uh, we now have an equality objective versus this swing structure at 81.32. So keeping an eye on the, on Aussie yen for a breakdown there. Obviously that coincide with the, uh, the Aussie also rolling over. Aussie Swiss has a nice a potential corrective pattern developing here, which should see uh, support come in at this trend line, 70.33, and, uh, and we can see a pop off there. Um, as it's the fourth test of this trend line, uh, I think we're probably looking at maybe a, a symmetry swing move before getting another leg to the downside in terms of uh, the Aussie Swiss. Uh, these fourth tests tend to uh, be the ones that ultimately see the, the trend line fail. There's a Kiwi, I don't have anything to do in there. Let's take a look at the... So similar setup in terms of the, the Aussie, I'm looking for this equality objective, 6902. We had that bearish rejection candle yesterday, but no follow through at the moment. Um, and I prefer the risk reward scenario in terms of the Aussie, there's a bit more scope on the downside. Kiwi, yeah, and I was looking at this this morning. Um, if we get a close at current levels, uh, this nice inside day uh, continuation pattern developing here, because we have scope then to test the equality objective, which, uh, which would see us move like so. So plenty of, uh, in terms of risk reward, this uh, certainly ticks the boxes. So we're we'll paying attention to where we close on this Kiwi Yen. If we can close just inside this, or within yesterday's range, but a bearish close, then I'm gonna be looking on the short side there, targeting uh, 74.52. CAD yen sitting right at this trend line support. Uh, let's see wh where we close on that one. There's a potential that uh, we get another leg higher if we can get a bullish reversal. So I'm keeping an eye on the CAD yen. CAD Swiss. I was looking for the CAD Swiss to ultimately test this trend line here. We haven't quite got there. Keeping an eye on that. If we can get a, a trend line test here, then I think that sets up uh, a nice uh, opportunity on the long side in terms of the CAD Swiss. So those were those are the charts that I'm watching. The uh, the main, I guess, the, the key, the one that I'm really paying attention to this evening is this Euro Yen, um, and I'll be looking to uh, to do something on the short side there, uh, targeting 128.17 initially. And I've obviously the only other order I've got running at the moment is in this uh, in this Aussie. So that, uh, that brings you up to speed with what I'm watching, guys. Are, th are there any questions? If you have a pair you want me to take a look at. <coughs> um, normally what happens, Ben, Ben asks what's a bull bear trap. I'll show you the pattern that, that develops. You, you'd see these most regularly on the hourly time frame. So um, you would get, uh, you get a, a, let's say a strong move to the downside you get a distribution. So you get this type of Constanza trading uh, that normally lasts through an eight. More often than not, you'll see this in an Asian session. So you get this type of pattern. And then um, what you'll often see then is the London as, London, as London liquidity comes in. So let's say around 7, 7.30 UK time, you get the stop run. Uh, one second. Re-engage this. So you get a stop run that takes out the stops just below that overnight low and immediately reverses. And then more often than not, what you'll see is a three-wave corrective move develop. And then that three-wave corrective move may terminate and the trend may resume, or we're going to start a new, or we're going to see a new move um, to the upside. What you want to pay attention to is that the trend move. So and again, obviously the inverse is true on the long side, but you get that trend move, that day, a strong daily close, a candle, uh, you know, closing strongly on the daily. Then you get an overnight distribution in Asia and then a little pop uh, into just prior to the, the London Open. And then you get that break, that stop run that is quickly reversed. So if, if we're going to see genuine trend continuation, we expect the market to just melt. But where we stall out just uh, just below the, the stop zone here where you, you know, maybe 20 or 30 pip stop zone, and then you get that strong rejection, that's the signal that we're prob you're probably in a bull or a bear trap scenario. 
Does that make sense, Ben? I mean, the, the, the pattern plays out on all time frames. I, it's just, I've over the years have paid atten most, most attention to it on the hourly time frame. Um, but, it, you know, there's, it, there's a sequence, a repetitive sequence that just um, occurs over and over again. It, this is kind of how it looks. Um, good. Any other questions? Equally, if you don't have a question, if you can type an N in the chat box, so I know we're all on the same page and, uh, and I can wrap this, this one up here. Um, and again, be sure to join me uh, next Wednesday, 1 p.m. UK time, uh, when, uh, when I'll be introducing the uh, Ticknell E-mini S&P trader. Okay, good stuff. Thanks very much for your time, everyone. Hope you have uh, a great weekend.